All right, class. First off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today we're going to be talking about Julius Caesar, basically how he came to be the emperor and then what happened to him and and also like what happened after he passed away, you know, who took over and things like that. OK. So we're going to analyze the setup of Rome Republic and then we're going to critique the way Julius Caesar came into power. And then we're going to create an argument on whether one person or multiple amount should be given all the power during the emergency. And you know what, to be honest, I think I might change that last question. So don't be surprised if the question's different, okay? All right, so here's your warm-up picture. So basically, all I'm asking you to do is explain what is happening here. So look at the expression on people's faces, look at the action scene, what's happening in the foreground, the background, from left to right, and things like that. You know, uh, pay attention to people's hands as well. That's, that's the real key part. Um, and explain what's happening. What's going on here? Okay. So not too hard of a warm up. Okay. So uh, pause the video, write your response, because we're moving on in three, two, one. All right. So like I said in the last uh, lecture video, uh, Rome started off as a republic. Now, the thing is, there were two types of citizens. There were the patricians and the Philebians. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I pronounced that second one correctly. The thing is, both were allowed to vote, but only the patricians could actually hold government office. So again, the citizens, all of them, could vote. But unless you were one of the patricians, um, you could not run for political office. You couldn't hold a government job unless you were part of that group. Now, there were two chief officers. They were the consuls and the praetors. Okay. Uh, so they would also be known as praetorians. Okay. Now, the praetors were in charge of civil law. In a sense, they were kind of like the police, you know, more or less. But as Rome's territory grew, so did their responsibilities. You know, they were needed more to do other things. Um, and eventually they would be judges in cases involving non-citizens. So if something happened between a citizen and a non-citizen, they might be within their jurisdiction to do something. But if it was a non-citizen and non-citizen, then they would be able to um, hear what's going on and base basically be a judge in the trial right there and then. Now, in the first century BC, Rome really started to have some problems. Um, some of these senators and stuff like that, they started to be kind of like in cliques and like little political parties and stuff like that. And then, then all of a sudden they started fighting for power. And this caused chaos in the senate because now no one's helping one another no one is working together to solve problems in rome and try to like you know make laws to make people's lives better and things like that no now it's all about what can i get for myself how much power can i get and um this is where things start turning really bad roman leaders started recruiting armies and these armies wouldn't swear allegiance to rome they would swear allegiance to the general. You know, so instead of we're going to protect the people and the people's rights, now it's like I'm following whatever the general says. Even if it may, may mean doing something against the uh, country of Rome. So civil war broke out in Rome and it went on for about 50 years. Okay, there's a lot of backstabbing, a lot of fighting going on. Um, now, Again, I'm not going to go through his whole life. I might make a TikTok video about it. But Julius Caesar ends up coming up. And one of his most defining moments is he defeated the, some forces in Pompeii. Okay. And it's because of this and other things that he's kind of seen as like, hey, this guy is actually, uh, he's pretty good. You know, he's a, you know, Chingon type of guy. You know, someone we can follow and lead. You can lead us. So... 
in 45 BC, he is named dictator of Rome. Now, dictator means absolute ruler, meaning they whatever they say goes, and there's no arguing about it. Um, so some of um, the senators, who and some of them were friends of Julius Caesar, were like, you know, this guy's getting too powerful. We don't like this. So they killed him. And one of his best friends, Brutus, um, stabs him back too. And this is where the famous uh, saying of Julius Caesar, et tu, Brute, et tu, meaning, and you too, Brutus, you too, you know. And so now that, that they killed Julius Caesar, a lot of these guys are like, okay, things are going to be better, things like that. But the thing is, they didn't realize is the next person to step up and take over for Julius Caesar was his grandnephew, Octavian. And Octavian you know did not hold back and he went after those senators and he went after all the people who basically uh, killed his uh great uh uncle or profited from it and it got to the point where he even went after mark anthony and cleopatra and killed them now in 27 bc the senate gave octavian a new title Augustus. And this is the name a lot of historians know him by. A lot of people know him by Augustus and not his birth name, which is Octavian. So from 31 BC to 14 AD, this is known as the age of Augustus. Okay. And there is a statue of him right there. Uh, now, just like his great uncle, he was very popular, but his main source of power was controlling the army. Because again, he was a pretty darn good leader and just like his uh, great, great uncle he had a military mindset okay so the senate then gave augustus another title imperator which is emperor and so augustus was the first emperor of rome the empire of rome it wasn't julius caesar that's a big misconception people think it's julius caesar Julius Caesar was never emperor. He was dictator, but he was never emperor. Now, another big thing, too, guys, I want to share with you guys is this. A.D. The term A.D. does not mean after death. Okay? A.D. means, it's Latin for anno domini, which in English translated means in the year of the Lord. Okay? It does not mean after death. And if you don't believe me, look it on Google. Okay? And I'll tell you, A.D. does not mean after death. It's Anno Domini. All right. So after Octavian, Augustus, a series of good emperors come up. You know, there are like a couple bad ones here and there, a little sprinkle. But majority of them are really good. Nerva, Trajan, uh, Hadrian, uh, Antonius uh, Pius, and... Uh, uh, Marcus Aurelius, uh, who was basically like a philosopher and a general and emperor. So, yeah, he was he was pretty good. And the thing is, they treated the ruling class with respect. That's why a lot of the upper people liked them. The other thing is, too, why a lot of middle class people liked them is they maintained the peace in the empire. You know, yeah, they had wars and battles and this and that, but... For the majority of the, the time, there was peace. Rome heard about wars and battles going on, but they didn't feel the pinch of it. They didn't feel any heat from it because it was way out, you know, fighting the barbarian clans and things like that, the Germanic tra tribes and stuff like that. Um, and also, they supported domestic policies that generally helped the empire, helped the people, you know. Uh, they got fresh water brought to them, you know, good food and a plentiful amount of food. And so things were looking really good for Rome at this time. And that's why this part of Rome's history is known as Pax Romana. It's known as like the golden age, okay, of Rome. And that lasted for about 200 years. All right. So with that being said, here is your question. Who do you believe gets remembered more in history? 
good leaders or bad leaders. You know, so you got people like Martin Luther King, you know, Medgar Evers, you know, um, you know, Abraham Lincoln. So you got good leaders like that. But then you also have people in history who are really bad leaders, you know, like Hitler and Stalin and, you know, guys like that, you know. Um, so who do you think gets remembered more? Good, the good leaders or the bad leaders? And why do you believe this? So think, take a minute, think about it, really think about who do you think gets remembered more? The good leaders are bad. Um, the writing prompts on the bottom there for you, okay? I believe history remembers good or bad leaders more because, and explain, okay? So once you finish this question, you are done with this lesson, okay? Pretty short, I know. But we'll be getting into more stuff next lesson, okay? Um, so with that being said, guys, uh, you take care, you be safe, and I'll see you guys later, okay?